this Inspired Insider.com interview, we have Max Teitelbaum. He's co-founder of What Runs Where. Listen to this interview. How do you get started getting sales when you first create your product or software? Listen to how Max starts with a beta program and how much he actually charges his friends. That and much more coming up right now. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Max Teitelbaum. He's co-founder of What Runs Where, which gives companies competitive advantages with media buying. He's a mentor at Grow Labs and helps with ventures at Baylor University. Max, thanks for uh, taking the time. My pleasure. Happy to be here. We're going to talk about, everyone wants to know how they go from that idea to making their first sale. You know, we get a lot of cus- uh, comments from people who they have tons of ideas, they don't know where to start, maybe they want to do a side business with a full-time job. I know you, you're the perfect person because you run What Runs Where and you started from the idea inception to, to now, which is a growing company. Um, but just to give people an idea of the, the beginning stages or the, some of the difficult stages, tell us about that, some of those difficult stages or plateaus that, uh, that would be good. Sure. I mean, when, when, when you start a company, you're, you're, at least at the very beginning, you grow constantly or you should grow constantly because it's a new idea and you have huge growth potential. You get to a point, be it you know early, it might be a couple of days or a week or two weeks where things may not change that much and you sort of hit a growth plateau, and especially as your user base starts to grow and you start to experience churn, that plateau can sort of sneak up on you. So when we released our first trial, what runs where, and we said instead of saying, you know, just pay us a couple hundred bucks a month and use it, but you can try it for a dollar for seven days, we got a huge influx of new users where users came pouring into the website because they really did want to try it. But after a bit, after a week or so, you know, those people started to cancel the product if they didn't like it because they were just trying to test out. Well, new people came in, our numbers sort of stagnated. So we had to figure out what to do there. How, how, do, how do we continue growth or are we going to fall into this trap where, you know, we may grow a couple points a month but not that close to 10, 20, 30% growth that you're used to stay, seeing at that early stage. So what we did there is we put together a fairly comprehensive um, win-back program that allowed us to go and actually contact those cancels and try and um, bring them back within the service, which was very successful for us and helped us really get past that because if we churned users, if we could bring some of those users back, that would be our entire growth at that point. Yeah, no, I like that. So what did you do to win them back? You call them, you you know, at the beginning, it's just, you know, myself calling them and saying, hey, I'm one of the co-founders. And people are flattered that, you know, yeah. a co-founder would call them and, you know, really talk to them. And then, you know, a, a bunch of it's user errors, so they don't understand how to use the product, which, you know, helped us build the correct help documents. And the rest of it could be working with them on a one-by-one basis to make sure that, you know, they can use your service. Or it might just be that personal touch that convinces them that, you know, you're the company that they want to stick with. Yeah, I mean it's tough because you spend all that time and energy, and then you know they sign up and then they cancel. So, yeah, a lot of us need to probably implement some kind of winback program. That's a good good tip. What about a story early on when you how you got started with your first sales? Sure. Well, I mean we're we're in a bit of a unique situation where my partner and I ran other businesses within the space that we went into. Mm-hmm. So when we first launched the product, we had been using it within our within our own internal businesses before. So, and we, we had quite a few friends that, that knew about the product and wanted to try it. So we had a ready-made audience where we went to these people and said, hey, it's working for us. You know, we're, we're, we're experiencing great success marking other people's campaigns with it. You should pay us to do it. And we asked them to pay us 2000 bucks a month for it, and they did. And, you know, we're one of the only betas I know of where the price in the beta was much, much higher than the price at launch. Usually people say, oh, it's a beta, it's free, just try it, give us some feedback. We went the other route and said, no, pay us 10 times what we ended up releasing it for monthly. So how did people we, feel about that later, that uh, they, um, they paid over you? Half of the, over half of those beta users still use us to this day. That's great. They pay it. They love us, and we love them. You know? So what do you say to them? You say to like a friend, you want them to try it. Like, um, Let's say I want to go to my friend, and I want him to, to, to try mine, and I want to charge him. What did you say to them? 
that this is working, you know, this is working really well for me, or I've been working on this. Um, a lot of these people ran a bit larger companies, so that that investment was a huge investment for them. Try it for a month; you'll love it. Just try it. You know, you just ask. You'll be, and that's the common theme that comes. You'll be surprised what happens if you ask people. Be it, you know, if you ask for um, a favor from a friend, or you ask for, you know, a partnership or a connection within business. A lot of people say yes. They just need the right prompting and the right questions to be asked. Yeah, and they trust you too. But I mean, still, Hopefully. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you kind of talk about from the beginning where you plateaued the uh, story. Of one of the first sales of the beta program. Tell us about some of the uh, milestone. One of the milestones you had with the company. You know, well, the 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 major milestone in my mind it will always be is when we when we had enough active users that made enough money, and we had to make a decision: do we want to hire our first employee, or do we want to continue running it just the two of us? And and th and that that's a major major decision, because at that point you have to decide. You know, is it going to stay a small business? Or do you want to try and grow this into a real company? Is it either going to be a lifestyle business where you generate enough cash to live a great life, right. if you have a nice house, or do you want to try and build this into something great? And we're we're a self funded business, so we didn't raise a whole bunch of money. So when when we went to hire our first employee, we need to make sure that we could pay that person. And we were making enough money, so that that was a huge milestone for us. We chose to hire, and you know, a year later we're at twelve people. But that's amazing. Um, that's great. We're, we're we're going. It's you know, it's a, it's a fun journey. But that that decision, you know, one of the most pivotal ones in terms of the business. Because if we decide to go the other way, it would just be me and my partner, and I'm not sure where we'd be or how well we'd be doing. Yeah, you. Know, I mean, you're investing back in the business to grow it. What? Um, exactly. Tell me about what what kind of clients do you serve? I mean, we serve a whole bunch of different kinds. For anyone from large advertising agencies to large brands mm -hmm. to independent, a lot of independent affiliate and direct response marketers, and um, a couple ad networks. So we work with anybody from large brands like Scotia Bank or Kabam or Kickside to advertising agencies like PhD um, to a lot of small, you know, guys sort of like you that just sit there and say, "I want to try some online marketing in my spare time, and I want to see what's sort of happening." Yeah. Um, so what's, I mean, obviously your story is great, but people care about themselves. So what's one thing that the audience can, what they should start doing to get their first sale and going from that first sale to, to where you're at? Well, put the product out there. You, like, a lot of people get stuck developing products and saying, oh, I have a great product. It just needs one feature, one more feature, one more feature. And we call this, here we call that Duke Nukem Syndrome. We just keep trying to add things and nothing ever gets released and you end up burning a ton of time and money. Um, you, if you get the product out there and you even tell your customers just pay us, it's not going to be perfect, but we'll improve it. Some people will take that leap of faith for you. It may be a small percentage, but you, if you can show improvement, those people will stick with you, especially if they believe in what what you're doing. So don't be worried about a half managed product out there as long as you can show that the product is if you can show constant improvement. So tell me about what happened with the mobile product that you so, had. Yeah, so we have What Earns Wear Mobile. We ended up acquiring that cyber business, so we bought another company. And we brought that company's technology in-house. It, was, it wasn't it was the greatest, um, but we decided to push out there anyways. So it'd be first to market. We pushed out a product that was maybe 60% out to where it is today. And some people liked it, some people didn't. But we said, hey, it's a beta product, and it's still technically in beta today. And we just started pushing updates. And those people that tried it are still are still on there today because they were able to see us constantly improving the product yeah. and that you know that that's a really important key is that if you're gonna put out something happy you have to show constant improvement you can't just say oh it's out here pay us and we're never going to improve it right so don't just release it but actually show them that you're listening to their feedback and improve the product a lot yeah exactly what so tell us what tools software do you or systems you use for the business that you'd recommend others to use well one of one of my favorite tools that we use for our sales team and I really love his pipe drive. I'm a big advocate of pipe drive, and I've sent a very good friend of yours and mine, Andrew Warner, over there. I will claim that right now. <laughs> I was on the talk about it, and now his face is actually on their sales page. So I think I should be getting some kind of, you know, like, you know, agent check or something, <laughs> agent to the stars. But we love pipe drive because we use it for our sales team, and it, it really allows, as the manager, for us to see visually what 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 each of our people are doing, but also for you know a sales rep to be able to. Act, properly organize their leads and bring them through our pipeline and really keep on top of everything. Yeah, no, I've used it. It's really, really valuable. 
Um, so, Max, appreciate your time. I know you're busy. You, are, uh, you have tons of meetings, things to do. Where should people reach out to thank you? And I want you to tell us a little bit about anybody, What Runs Where. Anybody can, anybody can email me personally. It's max, M-A-X, at whatrunswhere.com. Mm-hmm. It might be a couple you know, hours before I get back to you, but I try to respond to everybody. That's great. Um, what Runs Where, for a really quick elevator pitch, is an online advertising intelligence service for media buying and optimization. We allow you to buy smarter advertising online by helping you see what your competition is doing so you can leverage that back within your own ad campaigns to reduce risk and increase your return on investment. So can that you tell like me, helpful. yeah, can you tell me one cr- great story you heard? You don't have to name the company if you don't want, but of what the results they got from using it? Yeah, I mean, I was talking to a user the other day that um, that was telling me about how he, he loves us and he and he there was a problem with his credit card, so he, he gave me a call to make sure that everything was okay, and we got that all sorted out. But um, he was telling me about how you know he, he was doing okay. He was you know he was running this small business. It was making about a thousand bucks a day his business, and he started using our product. You know, over the past couple of months, by you know sort of using that day and leveraging that day, he's able to he's able to triple his business through use of online channels. So he's really wow. you know he's really ramped up that marketing. And he's at the point where he's making a couple thousand dollars a day. And, you know, he said it's because of us. And I think he's being overly generous, I'm sure. I, I like to think that we help. But uh, a lot of it comes down to people's hard work. But yeah. stuff like that really makes me happy to hear. I, I, I don't care as much how much money we make. I, I, just, right. I just want people to use the really cool product that we built. Right. So what do you think he does to use your product that makes it so successful? He actually like his takes time to dive into the data. He... He pulls, you know, ads and looks for similarities between the ads, for similarities mm-hmm. between the placements, and he ends up, you know, building advertising campaigns on the fly, and then pr- applies correct testing procedure to them. Okay, Max, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and um, please thank Max and uh, check out what runs where. Thanks, thanks, so thanks much. Max. Okay.